All right, guys, Model Rocks 321 here, back with another video. You can see the Saturn V back there. But this video isn't about the Saturn V. This video is about high power certification. I'm going to talk about a high power rocket and my certification. I'm certified at level one. That means I can fly H and I motors. I can buy them, but I can't. They won't ship them, I don't believe. You got to be. You got to be like a pickup deal, if I'm not mistaken. Unless you can have them shipped if you have the license. I'm not sure. I forget how that works. I forgot to check on that. But I am level one. I can fly H&I motors. I got it years ago and now I'm through NAR. And you always have that L1 on your car as long as you stay a member. Um, that's one of the things. And I can fly those motors. H&I only. Unless I assert it to level two, then I can get J, K, and L motors. So that's how the process works. This these rockets are built a lot more tougher, thicker tubes, just more heavy duty. These are thick, thick plywood fen, uh, fins. And you can see here there's a thick fillet of epoxy. You pour it and you let that sit, and it's not. It'll just la it'll layer itself out or level itself out, and it'll be nice and smooth. Um, these here's a C engine compared to the casing for a high power motor. This is a 29, 120, 29, this is a 29, 240 casing right here. And you put your, your cell, your solid fuel goes in the inside. It has a hole through the middle and your ejection charge is black powder. Let me move this down because I know you guys can't see that. It's black powder that you pour into this well. It comes with the motor and then you put a sealed disc over top of it. It's just like a, pretty much like a sticker that goes over top of this. It gets loaded into the motor into the uh this one takes this adapter so this will go inside of here like that i don't fucking do it with one hand i have to do it right yeah so this will go in the inside of here because this is a 29 millimeter motor mount this is a 38 millimeter motor mount in the rocket this is a 29 millimeter casing but this is the adapter so this will go into the bottom of the rocket and you will hold that into place i have the caplo claw is the process or the invention that this guy came up with is a way of uh, retention of holding the motor and I'll show you that in just a moment. But yeah, once it's loaded up, you have your parachute pack. This is a single flight, no due deployment, it just goes up, no electronics involved. It'll pop the top off. And if you get a successful landing is what you want, you will get your certification. Any damage or if the rocket crashes, anything happens, you gotta redo it. And there's a, you know, a checklist and stuff that you should follow. And it's a, a kind of like a mentorship. Like I had a guy by the name of Jack that was my guy. He served me. He got the motor. I told him I wanted to uh, get certified in our club. So he got the motor from me. I was, spent time building the rocket. He checked it all out and said, you're good to go. So we set up a day and we flew and it was successful. And um, that's how my certification went. And I've flown this rocket again. <clears throat> I, I started on the H180 White Lightning, which is a pretty good motor. But on one of the flights, the delay was too long because it was a, a club launch and we had a vendor and I bought the kit, but he didn't have any shorter delays. And this right here will show you what happens if you have too long of a delay. So it turned the rocket all the way over and when it ejected, it zippered right here. I fixed it since, I kind of filled it in right there was a zipper where the, the, the cord, is that it? Let me check, take a look. Yeah, that's it. So right there, the, the um, shock cord just tore into the rocket but i was able to get it as fair as uh repaired as i could you know i'm trying to get the top off you might get to see the inside yep so you have the parachute in there so you can see that line right there where it's zippered it's zippered right there so i just saw um, layered it with epoxy and try to get it fixed up as best way i could i pulled it stretched it back out but it's zippered right there that's just a something that can happen um high power stuff is really powerful they don't really they take it seriously those motors so they're pretty hard to uh obtain just on your own you got to be certain they check the vendors are told to check because you don't want to lose your license or anything so um yeah so that's how the process went i've flown it again also had some nice flights out of it it's been years since i've flown high power because i just don't have that field that i'm flying in is not a high power field and plus i don't have the motors and i don't have a pad for it i would always use somebody's pad because this rocket flies using uh, rail buttons. This is no launch lug, this is big stuff. So we gotta have, um, has two uh, launch rail buttons. There's one there and there's one right there. 
So I will show you the bottom motor retention system. Let me get this here like that. So on the bottom of here, it's something like this right here. So you put the motor, I'll put this in as an example. It's the adapter. This will go in. Oh, it may not even go in because these are on. Oh yeah, we're good. So this will go on and then these will clamp around the sides. I can actually take these all the way off. I just put them on just to, I wanted to show you guys on um, how this goes. If I can get it with one hand, I may not be able to get it with the one hand. So let me uh, do something real quick. But yeah, this is just a method of, um, it's a real cool method. I actually like this. It's a way to retain the motor, keep it in place during your flight. So say your engine's fully loaded, it goes in. And you will hook each of you, you get the idea. This will hook on that side, and the other one hooks on this side. Um, can't get it right now, but let me back this off. I can. So you kind of get the uh, idea of what's what's going on here. Is I'm trying to. There we go. So this will hook on this side. The nozzle will be sticking out. That comes with the motor. Like I said, the Aerotech H180. Yeah, I might have to take this all the way off just to get this hook around. H-180 White Lightning. Flew really well on this rocket. It's a great, great performer. So this will hook on this side. And this one will hook on this side. So it'll be like that once they're um, all situated. It'll lock in place like that. Hopefully you can see it. And then, you know, you get back and you do your countdown and everything's set up. Rocket takes off. As long as it's successful, no damage, no real, you know, parachute comes out. And it lands good and then you certified you just like that and to move up once you're level one i can certify somebody in the same class like i can certify somebody at level one i can't certify someone in level two because i'm not level two so that's kind of the idea of it then you can move on up to level three level two rockets i'm pretty sure you start moving into your electronics for sure for um dual deployment wow i forgot that was in there so here's the casing if the casing has an aft and a forward closure so these can come off and that comes off for cleaning and everything. Just a size comparison just to show you next to the Phoenix missile. That's just the bottom half to the um, iris next to the Phoenix. Phoenix is like 2.6 inches. This is 4 inch diameter. So yeah, really I like the iris a whole lot. This was a Binder Design rocket. Um, it's company Binder. I'm not sure if he's still around. I haven't seen anything from him. He may still be out there. Here's the parachute, thick nylon. I mean, all serious stuff. Bell swivels clasp so heavy duty big big lines tough tough parachute let me see what else we got oh yeah long heavy duty shroud lines like this nylon it's tube nylon and on the bottom i have um a kevlar sleeve that's covering the bottom half of this so when ejection happened repeatedly it don't get all it don't ruin the rocket so that's how that goes that's some um, high power um, it's not a, it's not too hard to do. It's not too hard. Just study, learn everything you can learn about it. Low and slow first launch. Don't do nothing too complicated for your first one. Just something easy. Something just gets you certified. Once you get certified, and then you play around later. Do your um, do your bigger builds and get get all into it. But for the most part, I fly like I said, mid and low power. This high power rocket. Just don't get flown because like I said, just don't have. The field. And I think the FAA has to be notified, if I'm not mistaken, about high-power launches. I could be mistaken on that part. I just forget some of the stuff. Since I don't really, you know, look into it all that much. But um, it's fun. It's a cool program that they have. So you can um, fly the bigger stuff if you have the space for it and if you have a club that, that does it. I think the club here, SARA, um, closer down, to more south, like near Tucson, heading that way anyway from Phoenix. I think they fly... Um, high power down there if I'm not mistaken I have to probably try to catch one of their launches at some point but yeah just wanted to talk to you guys about high power um let me know in the comments what you think and if you're interested in it and any mistakes I may have missed made in this uh, discussion like as far as the FAA and anything else but for the most part I think I nailed it with um with the facts about high power certification the program and everything which is pretty cool I have another rocket over there that's uh, that's a high power it's the high deck um, scale. It's another scale kit, similar to this one. Research rockets, old school research rocket. 
Now you can see this one is the Atlantic Research Corporation, Alexander, Virginia. Got the decals done up. You know, I like the way they came out. Tango Papa did these for me. We worked on it to get them, you know, scale just right and everything. So Tango Papa, shout out to Tango Papa. He's been been doing it for for a good while now, making our decals in this rocketry hobby. So guys like share and subscribe to the channel hit that like button on the way out subscribe if you're new here do model rocket stuff and this is a high power video just wanted to chit chat with you about it because a viewer somebody in the comments i forget who mentioned um could i talk about high power in one of them so that's what i did and here's a look at those the clamping system you can see they're all charred from flights yeah it's just a brass tube Brass tube with a screw with a washer, then this little hook that hooks around the edge of the um around the motor, hooks around the motor, holds it in place, real secure. So that's what that is. And there's the casing again. Here's the casing next to a C engine just for size. I mean, you get some serious, serious power. You know, it's not, it's no joke anymore. When you get to these big, big ones like that. Like I said, for this, for my certification, no H, no uh, electronics involved. Just Shot it up high, parachute popped out, came down, it was good. Then one, like one or two launches later is when I got that zipper. Delay was too long, rocket was pointing, you know, pretty much straight down, and then when the ejection happened, it ripped. It zipped right into the uh, side of the parachute. Show you how heavy duty that stuff is, that force. So, all right guys, I'm gonna get out of here. Hit the thumb up on the video, help me get moved around the algorithm, help people find the videos. More rocket stuff coming. My rockets, three, two, one. And also, I forgot to show you the level one certification pin you get once you achieve that. So here's my L1 pin. You can put it on your, whatever you wanna put it on. So you get that once you certify. There's one, two, and three. You'll get all three if you certify to all three levels. Later.